Let the world tremble. I will not be afraid. On sanctity before me, I will not be moved. I have blessed assurance. You were. My future secured. I know that I will always win. Whatever comes my way, I know. And victorious in the name of the Lord. And victorious in the name of the Lord. Foundations be shaken. I will not be. Thousand falls beside me, my life you preserve. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. I know that I will always win. What And victorious in the name of the Lord. Hey, I was born for this. I was made for this. This is my moment. It's my time to shine. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to somebody and shout glory. Turn to someone else. It's so nice to see your beautiful face this morning. Amen. Amen. Are you blessed? Say, I'm blessed. Say, I'm blessed going in.
Say, I'm blessed coming out. Say, everywhere that I go, I'm a blessing. Say, people are blessed because of me. Where I go, that place flourishes. Hallelujah. Wasn't October a wonderful month of proclamation? Are you excited for the word of the month for November? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Let's just go ahead and lift our holy hands and just give expression to our Father and thank Him for such a wonderful year. We are already in the last quarter of 2020. And for some, it may have been a challenge. But for us, we've been nothing but overcomers. Say, I'm victorious. Say, greater is He that's in me. Then he that is in the world, somebody shout hallelujah. 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 You know what just happened there? You just bless your 2021. You just bless the last couple months of this year. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Why don't you go ahead and stand to your feet and just worship our Father. Father, we love you. Let's go ahead and express our love for the Father. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Oh, 
worship you, the Lion of Judah. And I express my love, I express my love for you. And I express my love, I express my love for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. It is so good to see your beautiful faces this morning. I missed you guys. It's been a while. So glory to God. Before we tune in into our service with our man of God, Pastor Chris, I want to go over today's word or today's daily devotion. The title is Courage for the Gospel. Everyone say Courage. For the gospel. In our readings uh, from the book of Joshua, chapter 1, verse 9, it says, Have not I commanded thee, be strong and of a good courage, be not afraid, neither be thou dismayed, for the Lord thy God is with thee, whithersoever thou goest. Say courage. So courage is the ability and will to do or stand for what is right or necessary in the face of adversity or opposition. It's the ability to face danger and opposition fearlessly and affirm your faith in Christ no matter the adversaries, the adversities that you face. It's a virtue everyone in Christ has been granted. Say, I have it. But not every Christian manifests in it. So you got to use it. So a person of courage understands that every opposition is an opportunity for progress and victory. This is what the Word of God gives you. It gives you courage and it gives you opportunity for their victory. Courage is what got the, uh, the church of Jesus Christ to where it is today. This is where we're at today because of courage. Amen. Had the apostle and the prophets of old not exhibited courage, by standing for what was right in spite of opposition, the gospel may, may never have gone around the world and got to us at the time it did. So praise the Lord for the apostles. They weren't afraid of kings and despots, and they sure weren't afraid to die. See, I'm not afraid to die for the gospel of Jesus Christ. They were strong and they were very courageous. See, I'm strong. So Paul, in his letter to the church of Thessalonica, recounted how he and some of others demonstrated great courage to preach the gospel despite fierce opposition. He said in the book of 1 uh, Thessalonians chapter 2, verse 2, he said, You know how badly we had been treated in Philippi just before we came to you and how much we suffered there. Yet God gave us the courage to boldly repeat the same message to you, even though we were surrounded by enemies. God gave them the courage. Say, God is giving me the courage. And this is the courage that we have from our Lord Jesus Christ, from the Word of God that built you up. Just let it, the Word of God, dwell in you richly that you may do great things. Say, I'm doing great things. Amen. So people of courage keep their focus on what they believe in. And nothing is too big for them to give or do in pursuit of their conviction. Therefore, set your mind on the Lord and his word and be ever ready to do anything for the furtherance of the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Say, I am ready. Say, I am ready. Praise the Lord. So go ahead and uh, just put your hand over your heart. And I want you to confess what I'm about to read 
or you can repeat it after me. Say, I'm strong and all the good courage. I'm ordained of God to preach the unsearchable riches of Christ, to minister life, to strengthen others, and bring them into God's light. Therefore, no matter the tests, the trials, opposition, adversaries, I maintain, I maintain my solid front in my Lord Jesus Christ. That inner fortitude to make the gospel known at any cost. Say, I'm courageous with the bonus of the Spirit in increasing measures. Hallelujah. Go ahead and rise to your feet. Let me just pray us in before we tune in into our service with our man of God, Pastor Chris. Let us pray. Precious Father, with the sacrifice of thanksgiving upon our lips, may our prayers be a sweet-smelling fragrance in your presence. Father, we rejoice evermore for your life and nature in our spirit, which makes it possible for us to fellowship with you. We are so grateful that you made us inseparably one with you, to truly live for you, to fulfill your will and purpose to your glory and praise. Thank you for your grace, your kindness, and your faithfulness. Thank you for your tender mercy, your loving kindness, and for your compassion upon each and every one of us. Thank you for your family here in, the, in this building. We thank you for your family that are watching online, Father. Let the word of God proceed so mightily today in our hearts, in the spirit, that it not only will change us, but it, it will make us good, do good things in your name. Father, we lift up our governments. We lift up this uh, presidential uh, um, voting right now, Father. We lift up everything, Father, on this island, our nation, Father. Lord, let your will be done in everything of this government and in our nation. Father, we lift up our families around the world. We lift up our uh, every church that is out there preaching the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you that the message of your gospel will, will go out mightily today. And the word of God will furthermore, Father, be that power and giving us that authority, Lord, to do mighty and great things in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Father, we lift up everyone that is going through some kind of challenges in their bodies right now. Let, uh, don't let the, uh, the work of the enemy establish in them, Father, but allow the word of God establishing them to build them up physically, mentally, but especially, Lord, spiritually. We thank you, Father, for your word, because it is the word, the word, the word that will take us, you know, to that right path. And Lord, we thank you. We honor you, Father. We honor you, Holy Spirit. And we pray this in the mighty name of Jesus and all God's children say it. Amen and amen. Turn to your neighbor and give him a high five. And tell him you're looking good this morning. So right after that, go ahead and uh, focus your attention to our screen. We'll be tuning in to our service with uh, our man of God, Pastor Chris. We honor, we worship you. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your kindness. Thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit in us. Thank you for the power of your word. And now again, our hearts and our minds are open to be guided, to be instructed, be informed, be inspired, and blessed in your presence. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, amen. Praise the Lord. I'd like to welcome you to the communion service for the month of November. But before we start serving the communion, we've got a number of things to share with you. First, last night we completed 300 day 
of the prayer thon that we started at the beginning of the year. So um, that was huge, non-stop praying since the beginning of this year. Once we got started, it never stopped. Every 15 minute session of every hour, of every day, of every week, of every month, we've been praying around the world. And the Lord directed us to do this. We didn't know who were really going to need to. But thank God. Thank God that we followed the instructions and did exactly what he asked us to do. And the results are before us. So we've just crossed the 300 and we have some more days to go to the end of the year. But I just want us to share some of those moments with you in this beautiful highlight. Watch this. Twelve noon is when we take off. Every 15 minute session of every day, of every week, of every month, Prayer is going on around the clock. The Pastor Chris Live Global Prayer Network celebrates 300 days of non-stop, uninterrupted, earnest, heartfelt, and effective prayers on the Pastor Chris Live Prayer Thon 2020. Glory to God for this historic landmark achievement. It's been 300 days, 7,200 hours, spanning over 28,800 consecutive prayer sessions with saints of God from over 188 countries, standing in the unity of the Spirit and effecting global change, stalling the works of darkness and bringing to pass the Lord's will for the nations. Thank you to all prayer partners of the Patrickus Live Prayer Network for your relentless passion and commitment to this cause. Thank you so much, Pastor, for teaching us how to pray. Thank you, Pastor Chris. Thank you, Pastor Chris, for the platform and the prayer network. Thank you, Pastor Chris. We got you, Pastor Chris. As we forge ahead on this extraordinary divine mandate, we invite you to join the million strong prayer force by following the man of God, Pastor Chris, on King's Chat and praying for 15 minutes daily. You can schedule your daily prayer times by visiting www.pastorchrislive.org as we prepare for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Don't be left out. Let your voice count before the Father as we bring His perfect will to pass on the earth through prayer. The Lord is counting on you. God bless you. Praise God. So make sure if you haven't been a part of this, join us before we round off at the end of the year. The kids have not been left out in our many programs. Let's show you just some highlights of what we called Kids Aglow, because they're really glowing for the Lord now. Watch this. Online party was a two hour engaging 
party for the kids, which took place on Saturday, the 24th of October, 2020. On the Love Tunes TV website, it was also transmitted on all the Love World networks, Love World Plus, Love World Sat, Love World UK, Love World USA, and Hello Love World. The program recorded hundreds of registered kids participating from different parts of the world, such as Nigeria, USA, India, Canada, the Netherlands, Togo, South Africa, and many more. We also found out that some adults registered and participated too. <laughs> the online party featured several amazing and unique programs, such as Bible Facts, Rhapsody Reading, Precious Diary, Precious Words, Folk Tales, TikToks, Super Virtues, and many more. This is a program for kids where we review and learn more of the teachings and messages of our man of God, Reverend Dr. Chris Iaquilome. You love that juice! <laughs> That's right! You know them. We live by them, we practice them, and we share them with all those that are around us. Those Super Virtues that make us special, they make us different, because we belong to Jesus. I have the nature of Christ. Therefore, I am full of love. Silver Sam, this is my fellow comrades. Silver Sam, I feel all the things I know for so much. There is only one name given amongst men for salvation, and that is the name of Jesus. I have overcome the world of poverty, death, sickness, and infirmity. My muscles are firm. My peau is sans défaut. Et ma vision est parfaite. J'ai les bonnes réponses et solutions à chaque question ou problème. Je suis extraordinaire. Amen. This is Gracious Diary. We will celebrate kids from around the world on their birthdays and any other special day because each kid is special and worth celebrating. I am so excited to see you and I know that you are excited to see me too <laughs> the shortest verse in the bible is john 11 verses 35 jesus wept and first thessalonians 15 5 to 16 rejoice always isn't that amazing jesus wept so we can rejoice always god also gives us instructions in his word the bible as his child, you should study the Bible and then learn what instructions he has given you to live by. Did you know that all these programs and kids are from our Love World Nation? Wow! We are super intelligent, creative and bold. In this time, when the enemy is after the souls of the kids, we are taking the message of our Lord Jesus Christ to the kids through the Love Tunes TV program. Glory to God. I'm from Christ Embassy, India. I participated in Kids A Glow program. It was so much fun. I feel so great after the program because it made me feel like I can conquer the world and do anything. Hi, my name is I'm a Christian and I'm from Christ Embassy, India. My daughter's name is Ashma and I was so excited to see her in the Kids at Globe program, a fun way of learning God's word. Wow, thank you so much, Pastor Sir, for this wonderful platform that you have given to, uh, to all our children to uh, receive the word of God. Hello everyone, my name is Pastor Rita Owase from Abuja Ministry Center and my daughter's name is Praise Owase. I was very thrilled watching her participate in Kids at Globe. Thank you, sir, for this great opportunity giving the children to express themselves in the word of God. Our warm appreciation goes to our father, our mentor, our teacher, and our hero, Reverend Chris Oyakilome, DSC DD, for teaching us God's word and his unique love for us. Pastor, we love you so much. Pastor, we love you so much. This has been the Kids of Glory Highlights. My name is 
Hadassah Undubisi. My name is Jessica Joseph. Thank you for watching. Praise God. That was beautiful. Now you can see the programs on Saturdays and Sundays on the Love World Networks. It's called Love Tunes. Now we've got the November Rhapsody of Realities for adults available. Make sure you get your copy and also get for others. Then the special edition for Reach Out Nigeria is still going on. So here's your November edition. And then, of course, we've got for our teens, Rhapsody of Realities TiVo, available. And this is for November as well. Then the Rhapsody of Realities for Kids, volume 102, and the one for early readers, the November edition. They're all available now. Make sure you get for your kids today. And we've got the Healing to the Nations magazine. So this is the November edition, full of inspiration. You really would love this. You'll love it. So make sure to get your copy. Now we've got some special programs in front of us between now and the close of the year for Rhapsody of Realities. So let's just share some of that information with you. Watch this. Granted us the grace and opportunity to take his gospel to billions of people in this year of perfection. Oh yes, through the messenger angel, Rhapsody of Realities, it's a fiesta prevailing over the fiasco. And fear is replaced with faith all around the world. Now we're celebrating the impact of God's Word and transformation of lives globally. Just as recorded in Psalm 110, verse 3, inspired willing soldiers for the gospel have arisen, fastening themselves to every available chariot. Just so they preach, they can reach more people through the One Million Rhapsody Outreaches Fiesta. With billions of copies of Rhapsody of Realities distributed so far this year, the messenger angel is indeed preparing us for the soon coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And it's our shining the light with languages season of the Reach Out Fiesta. Join us to reach out to different communities in their different languages. Multiplied millions have been reached for Christ as the distribution of Rhapsody of Realities in several languages is ongoing. And you can be a part of the Shining the Light with Languages season of the Reach Out Fiesta. We are right here where there is a tribe called Sansi. Sansi is a very, very old tribe living over here. And uh, we came here to distribute the Rhapsody of Reality among them. Their life gonna be changed. And the Rhapsody of Reality gonna bring a breakthrough in their daily routines, in their businesses, in their living standards. And coming up this month of November, get ready for Global Rion Outreach, GROW. The 2020 Rion Global Outreach Training is to adequately train Rion ministers and their members for their activation and mobilization unto soul winning by equipping them for the same. Holding on the 6th and 13th of November. Also coming up is the Rhapsody Global Conference, which comprises of the global ROPC and more. ROPC Lingual will be taking off in several languages of the world. It will feature messages from Pastor Chris, exhortation from other ministers, music, and intense prayer. Dear partner, we salute you for your steadfast commitment in reassigning desolate heritages together with the messenger angel. We invite you to celebrate with us at Rhapsody Network's Fiesta and Exhibitions, RNFE, and we look forward to receiving and celebrating you at the Angel Court at IPPC 2020. You will definitely love every moment of it. Also, you'll be positioned for greater exploits with Rhapsody of Realities as we showcase the exploits of the Messenger Angel in this year of perfection and prepare you for the coming year 2021. God bless you 
and see you at IPPC 2020. So remember, the IPPC is from 16th to 22nd. 16th is a Monday, 22nd is a Sunday. If you haven't registered for it yet, make sure you do so. Now, I told you that on the 1st of December, which is just a month away into the second, the next day, we're going to have a global prayer day, 24 hours from the evening of the first to the evening of the second. And I told you uh, why we really need to pray. See, we are um, fighting for the soul of each nation. We're fighting for the nations of the world. There are those whose plan it is to turn human beings to their property. That's really what they want to do. And if you don't know the scriptures, you'll be so ignorant of what's happening, you think it doesn't matter. But you have to look at the Bible and look at history. You're dealing with a cabal in the world, a group of individuals who have they've built the tired of building. They've bought the tired of buying. They have so much money. They don't know what to do with money anymore. They've owned. They've tired, they've tired of owning. What do you want to give them now? They have one more goal, which has been the goal of despots and tyrants throughout history. It's Satan's goal of making man his personal slave. So they've come full cycle. And what they want now is, you know, when you're, when you're young, you want to have a, a toy. For the girls, maybe they want some baby doll. Or it's the guys who want a, a toy car. As you grow, those things don't leave you. They don't leave you. The toy car you wanted to have as a kid, you now get the real big one, the real cars. And if you always wanted several toys, several cars, when you grow up, you'll be buying them. You do the same thing. The ladies are no different. I don't want to tell you theirs. But you see, this goes on in life. Wanting to control your environment is part of man's instinct. But that instinct, as every natural instinct, must be controlled. How do you control natural instincts? It's called character, discipline. And those who were never disciplined, are always the most vicious leaders you ever get. People who were never subject to authority always abuse authority. They always demand that others be subject to them. 
That's the way it is in man's natural life. The most authoritative people were always the least obedient to authority. And so, when you find people who want to exercise the next level of authority, all you have to do is look around. What they want now is to control human beings, the ultimate toy. So they can decide where you go, what you do, what you say. Satan has always wanted to do this. One day the Bible tells us he's going to have a chance. The Bible shows us he's going to have a chance. He's going to be in full control of an individual described to us in the scriptures as the Antichrist. And through the Antichrist and his policies, Satan will eventually have control over most of the world. And the Bible says, for a period of time, they'll be given into his hands. He'll control people. He'll make them do whatever he wants them to do. He'll have his mark on their bodies. He'll determine their decisions, their opinions. Everything about them will be controlled by Satan. If you're ignorant of the word, you will be deceived. And yet the Bible tells us so many times to not be deceived. Let no man deceive you. These things will come to pass. They will happen. But as we know through the scriptures and looking at history, Satan has made several attempts to do this ahead of time. The Bible is specific, and that's why during the program on your love world specials, I was taking you through dates and numbers, just so you know that God has a specific plan, and that the Lord determined when the Christ should be born. It had to be at his timing. Satan had been suspicious of different individuals, as men have been, had been suspicious. And they tried and killed several. And so when the Christ came, there were also attempts made on his life to terminate his life and ministry before he would have the time to fulfill that calling. Or it didn't work. Look into the word, you'd find the Lord has clearly determined expressly what should happen in every given period as specified for us in the scriptures. Let no one deceive you. What's happening right now is one more major attempt at one world government in control of human persons. That's what they want to do. And no political force can stop them. You have to understand this. They can't be stopped without God's people praying. The despots of the past did all kinds of evil. Some of them were there for so long. You'd be amazed how wicked leaders can be in office for a very long time. But it happens. 
And one of the reasons you cannot trust that somehow if the crowd, if a large population will stand against this, they'll be able to stop it. No, they always have hijacked the system throughout history. Maybe you don't know this. I told you during the your love world programs. Most of the protests and riots in most nations for a very long time were organized by the perpetrators of the very things they were protesting against. Why? Of course, it was a strategy. They were used in blindsiding others who would have protested or stood up against them had they been left to themselves. And so when they championed the cause, you, the honest man, thought they were fighting the same thing like you. And so you joined them, but they spearheaded it. But they were the perpetrators. They were the, they were the, the, the culprits. And you didn't know this. And you joined them. How many labor protests? I'm talking about protests by labor. How many yielded the desired results in your country? When they said they wanted more pay, did the people ever get what they wanted? When they called for the abrogation of some law, did they actually achieve it? Most of the time, they never did. Most of the time, they never did. Why was it? Because the protests were set up by the same people that promulgated those laws. And so they championed the cause. And you thought they were fighting for you. Somewhere along the line, it fizzled out. They were settled. You wondered what happened. Because they hijacked, hijacked your mind, hijacked the system. It was rigged all the time. What am I saying? I'm saying if you're waiting that somehow, if there are enough people to stand up against the deep state, against the perpetrators of this wickedness, that somehow it will work. It's not going to work. No, they'll hijack it as always. So for you as a child of God, don't wait for that. God never told you that that's how it will work. But he told you something that's guaranteed to work. He told you something that's guaranteed to work. It's guaranteed to produce results. Not just once in a while, but every time if you will put it to work. The trouble is most people never use it. Most are ignorant of it, and most are too lazy to do it. And that I will share with you today, and my hope is that you would think first as a Christian, as a child of God, think as a Christian. Don't think as a citizen of an earthly nation first. No, you are first a Christian before you are a Ghanaian. You are first a Christian before you are a South African. You are first a Christian before you are an American. You are first a Christian before you are Nigerian. You are first a Christian before you are British. You are first a Christian. That's how God sees it. That's the order. Because man is a spirit. Is primarily a spirit. You are a spirit. 
There's nothing in your spirit, your soul, or your body that's natively connected to any earthly country. Nothing about you. You are from that country as a citizen, either because you naturalized or because your parents of long, 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 long ago journeyed from somewhere and finally came there and settled there and you were born there and you were known as a citizen of that country. If you look at the Bible, none of you came from the country that you have claimed. We all journeyed from one garden, the Garden of Eden, where Adam and Eve were. This is where we all worked out from and kept expanding. And he told us, multiply, fill the earth, and we've done it. So, learning to pray for the nations of the world is so important at this time. And I said, in such prayer, we are actually wrestling for the souls of nations. We have to do it. We have to do it. And there's no restraint to the Lord to save by many or by few. So, it doesn't matter if there are not enough people in your mind who are doing this. It doesn't matter. We don't have to be so many to make it happen. But once you hear the word, once you hear the message, you get involved. You become a part of God's victorious army. You have to be. And the Lord will mightily reward us for this, I'm telling you. So let's do it. Let's do it. Turn your attention away from all those prayers of things you want. I warned you before. The selfishness in the church was part of what brought all this about. Too much selfishness. Too many people are caring only for themselves. All they cared about was about, well, just themselves. Their, their goals, their visions, the things they wanted to accomplish actually for their own names. And I hope you never go back to that. I really hope you never go back to that. Because, you see, the world is empty. There's nothing they, read, they can offer you. Nothing. 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 When do you think you can stop in desiring after the things of the world? The more you have, the more you want doesn't stop because they never satisfy. The only thing that satisfies is life in Christ. That's what satisfies. But if you bring in your personal dreams, you'll be back to where you used to be, the craze after something that you hope will satisfy along with your Christ becomes a problem. You then have a hunger for something you don't even know what it is. Just never get satisfied because you're not satisfying the one who called you. 
if you're satisfying the Christ that called you, then you live a fulfilled life every blessed day. Every day. Hallelujah. You're still there? So I want to read you a number of scriptures. We'll begin with the one I've read to you several times. 1 Timothy chapter 2 from verse 1. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks be made for all men. Observe what it says. First of all, supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. These are all different kinds of prayers. And it says that this should be made for all men. Next verse, for kings and for all that are in authority, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. For this is good and acceptable in the sight of God our Savior, who will have all men to be saved and to come unto the knowledge of the truth. Wow. Wow. I want you to observe that he guarantees results. Let's read the game from verse 1. Observe. I exhort therefore that first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. These are four kinds of prayers. Be made for all men. That means for all nations of men. All right? For kings. These are the leaders. And for all that are in authority, different levels and kinds of leaders. It says, that we may lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. What a guarantee. He says, if we pray the way he's asked us to, we're guaranteed to lead a quiet and peaceable life in all godliness and honesty. That's wonderful. That's what everybody wants. But who's going to do what God said to do to make it happen? This is the way to pray. So let's do it. Let's do it. Let's do it. And today being the first day of November is a great place to begin if you've not been doing this. You have to start today. And every, every day that you pray like this, take your calendar you, that you've done it. If you haven't done it, then make sure you do it before that day is over. Why? He told you it's a priority. Look at the verse again. Look at that verse one, one more time. It says, I exhort therefore that first of all, before you pray any other kind of prayer, first of all, look at it. It's a priority. So begin today. And I'm going to show you the kind of prayer he's dealing with here. Okay? Say supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. It's not just, oh, I remember my country, Lord, in prayer. Bless them in Jesus' name. That will not get the job done, especially where we are right now. In the scheme of things, in God's calendar, in the positions of, of nations and their governments right now.
I want to take you to Colossians chapter 4. And let us look at how this is described for us. Verse number 12. Epaphras. Now, Epaphras, a brother in the Lord in Colossae. Who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always laboring fervently. I want you to notice the term, laboring fervently for you in prayers, that he may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. He says, Epaphras, a servant of Christ, labors for you fervently in prayers. How do, what does it mean, laboring fervently in prayers? When you, you look at such a, uh, an expression, you want to find out what exactly the writer intended. And the word translated into laboring fervently is rooted in agonizomai. Agonizomai in the Greek means to contend with an adversary. It means to fight. So think about it. If it says, Epaphras, who is one of you, a servant of Christ, saluted you, always fighting for you in prayers. Fighting in prayers? And it chooses the word, agonizomai, which means he is contending with an adversary in prayer. That you may stand perfect and complete in all the will of God. Meaning that he's striving against some forces that had the capacity to stop the collusion Christians from advancing in their growth in Christ. So in the sense he is wrestling with an adversary over God's people in Colossae. So he's not fighting with God in prayer. Because God is on their side. So why did he have to do it? Because the Bible already got us instructed that our adversaries are not human beings. They're not flesh and blood. It says we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual beings, against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Then he tells us how to take under us the whole armor of God in this conflict. So, it's very important that you realize you're involved in it. You're either abdicating your responsibility or willfully disobedient. God wants us in the fight because every one of us is in it whether or not we know it. If you're not aware of it, it means the enemy has so far got an advantage of you. And it's time to change the situation. You've got to be in charge. Now, if you go to 1 Timothy chapter 6 and verse number 12, Paul says this, he says, fight the good fight of faith. That's the same word, agonizomai. Fight 
the good fight of faith. Lay hold on eternal life. That means seize it. Hold on to what you've got. Walk as a Christian. Live as a Christian. You've received eternal life. Live eternal life. That's what he's saying. Don't find yourself going back to the suke, the biological life, and holding on to earthly life. Says, lay hold on eternal life, whereunto thou art also called, and has professed a good profession before many witnesses. Lay hold on eternal life. Seize unto that spiritual life that God's given to us, your Christian life. Let nothing distract you from it or take you away from it. Think as a Christian. See as a Christian. Talk as a Christian. Live as a Christian. The Christian life is eternal life. You know, somebody asked me one time and said, uh, um, do you know anything about the prayer walk? I said, what, what do you mean by prayer walk? He said, if, if you're praying and just walking around the city and walking around the city, I said, well, I think you should do a prayer fast first. Because the Bible says fast and pray. They didn't say prayer walk. Fast and pray. So when, if you are really serious, fast. Anybody can walk around and burn time. So that's what you're trying to do. You're just trying to burn time. You don't have to move around. That's Old Testament style. You don't have to walk there. Wheresoever the sole of your foot shall tread upon. That's Old Testament. Today is your word from your mouth. You don't have to go there first. So I said, begin with fasting. Then you know you are serious. Begin with fasting. In other words, subdue your flesh. When you subdue your flesh, you wouldn't think of walking around. <laughs> mm. If your flesh is hungry enough for God, it will be too hungry to move around. You will be lying down on the floor. God will hear you faster. Lie down, out of hunger. You have to be really serious. And you know you are ready. In 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7, Paul shows us that apart from instructing that this should be done, he did it in his own life. Look at it. It says, I have fought a good fight. Again, the words are from agonizomai. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. I have fought a good fight. This was at the end of his life. Let me read fully. Next. So you see. Henceforth there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. So he was ready. It was the end of his life. And he looked back and he said, I fought a good fight. Imagine if Christ told you, I'll arrive in the morning, early hours of the morning tonight. Imagine that the Lord told you that. Imagine, just imagine that he told you, he whispered to you. And he says, Femi or Tony or Mary, Susan. I'm coming in the morning, early hours of the morning. I wonder what you say. Ah, Lord, please. Or are you going to say, okay, okay. What if he added this to it? 
I hope you are ready. <laughs> if he told you that, would you be excited to say, I fought a good fight? That's what you want. That's what you want in your life. You want to be able to say, I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. I fought a good fight. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Yeah. In Colossians 1, 29, you'd see, you'd see it again. Whereunto I also labor, striving, fighting according to his working, which worketh in me mightily. Fighting. We've got to have that mentality. The mentality of a fighter. Fighting for the cause of the gospel. Let the gospel mean so much more to you. That's what I'm saying to you. Let it mean so much more to you. For example, I, I, I heard that uh, the, the UK government is dreaming of another lockdown. Okay. You that are, you don't want it. What's the reason? Your reason should be for the cause of the gospel. That should be the first thing on your mind. And if that's what's on your mind, it doesn't matter how many times they have made the announcements. You defeat them. And I can tell you, the world doesn't belong to these political leaders who are being controlled by bandits. The world doesn't belong to them. But well, they're using the power. I should actually say they are abusing the power. And God's people need to know that they can pray. You can pray. You have to know you can pray. You can pray and pray with excitement in your spirit because when you pray, you win. When you pray, you win. As you know, they're doing what they're doing even though they know that what they're doing is wrong. There's more than enough evidence that it's not about the virus as they lied about all this time. And we've proved it again and again. And now lots and lots, I mean tens of thousands of virologists, epidemiologists, scientists of different fields, doctors, medical doctors, professors in the fields, a lot of them have spoken against the lockdowns, the masks, the social distancing, and the fraudulent tests. They've spoken against all these things. But why are several of the governments still doing them? Because they were part of a diabolical plan called Agenda 21. You can, you can look for it, check on it on the internet yourself. You would see some of the most dubious and devilish plans. I hope they don't 
uh, sugarcoat it before you get to see it. Because they keep, whenever we make these pronouncements, they hurry and go and start changing things. So, Agenda 21 has some details of their plans, and many countries signed on to it because they were deceived. They didn't know what was going on. They were deceived. They signed on to it. And this evil agenda is about the control of the human being. That's what it's all about. The seizure of properties. Globalization of all assets. But I want to remind you, in case you think that, oh, if everybody is going to be part of it, and then they share everything, and everybody gets a piece of it, and then we all enjoy it together as one happy big family. You're wrong. I'd like to remind you that during the, the global lockdown that they did in March, April, May, June, I want to remind you that when the lockdown was on, the perpetrators and collaborators created a situation where they themselves could go out. And I showed you several videos. They were going out. In other words, one law for you, a different law for them. That's exactly what the plan is. So they're not going to be a part of it, no. The world becomes their property. And they watch you behave as they want you to behave as they remotely control you. Because through the chip, the microchip, that will have been introduced. You know, we say micro, but uh, just like the SIM card. Do you remember the SIM card? It went from micro to nano. The nano card was smaller. So these are nano chips. All right, these are nano chips that will be introduced into the human system. And with those chips, They'll control anybody and everybody. Make you do what they want you to do. And God said in the scriptures, and I read it to you several times, that if anybody receives that mark, he's accursed. He's doomed. He go to hell. It's in the Bible. I read it to you again and again. You see it in Revelation 13, you see it in 14, and when God talks like that, you better listen. Because those people are no longer themselves. They're going to be controlled. They're going to be made to say things they never intended, but they accepted as an act of their own will. That's the reason for the condemnation. You didn't have to take it. And once you took it, you became a slave of the system, a child of the world, a child of Satan, a sworn enemy to Christ. And from then on, God says, all such will have eternity in the lake of fire. And once you have that mark, and they can now remotely control you and control your mind, they'll feed things into your system, feed thoughts into your mind you think are your thoughts, but they're not your thoughts. You're now remotely controlled. All you can think is unrighteousness. All you can do is wickedness. All you can think is against God. You would never think of doing right. Righteousness cannot go through your mind anymore. You're blocked from the things of God and from the ways of God.
Don't give yourself to it. Don't yield to it. And that's why the best way is subduing that system now in Christ Jesus and living the life that he's called us to live so that at the sound of the trumpet, the dead in Christ will rise and we that are alive and remain will be caught up together with them to meet the Lord in the air. That's the best way to get out of this. So begin today to pray and to wrestle for the souls of nations from the enslavement of the devil. Break the power of Satan over the nations. Use the name of Jesus to do it. Use words. Words have power. Words that are filled with faith and the name of Jesus Christ have power. They are real messiahs in the realm of the Spirit. When you make your faith declarations in the name of Jesus Christ, those are missiles in the spirit realm. And whatever they are directed at cannot resist the power. So it's time to use what we've got. We've got to. We have to. We have to. So wrestle for the souls of nations because there's so many people who are ignorant. So many people. Like the Bible says, multitudes, multitudes in the valley of decision. So many who know nothing. And except we stand in the gap for them and pray for them and intercede for them, they're doomed. So that's why we have to pray. We're praying for their sake. We're praying for the right governments in nations, for the right decisions by governments in different nations, for the sake of these billions of people that don't know where they're going. And that leads me to Something quite interesting. Oh boy, before I take that, I gotta I, I'd like to read this to you. Because, um, in fact, I, I noted this as just special reading. In other words, I don't plan to preach on it, because if I were to preach on it, maybe two months I'll still be on it. It's, it's a very inspiring portion of the Bible, and I, I hope that the Spirit of God will open your mind to see uh, how this identifies with you um, spiritually, okay? So it's from Exodus chapter 18. Exodus chapter 18, that's what we're going to be reading from. This is really beautiful. Did I say chapter 18? No, I meant chapter 23, verse 18. So Exodus Verse 18, chapter 23. Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with living bread. Now, um, he's just he's going to switch in a second. But I like the connection. Okay? I like the connection. So he says, Thou shalt not offer the blood of my sacrifice with living bread. Neither shall the fat of my sacrifice remain until morning, until the morning. The first of the first fruits of thy land thou shalt bring into the house of the Lord thy God. Thou shalt not see the kid in his mother's milk. So you see, he's talking about offerings and the, and the first fruit offerings, you know. And then suddenly, he moves into the next thing. Like they're connected. And they are, behold. I send an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place which I have prepared. Beware of him and obey his voice. Provoke him not, for he will not pardon your transgressions, for my name is in him. 
Does that remind you of the Holy Ghost? Remember what Jesus said about the Holy Ghost? Says every sin against the Father will be forgiven. Every sin against the Son will be forgiven. But a sin against the Holy Ghost, he says that will not be forgiven. So never you sin against the Holy Ghost. But this sure is the Holy Ghost. This angel is called the angel of his presence. Watch. So he says, I sent an angel before thee to keep thee in the way and to bring thee into the place. So they had this angel of God to bring them into the place that he had promised them. Verse 22. But if thou shalt indeed obey his voice and do all that I speak. Uh oh. Doesn't that tell you something? If you obey his voice and all that I speak. So God's telling you, he's in that angel. Didn't you see what he said? My name is in him. Wonderful. It says, but if thou shalt indeed, verse 22, obey his voice and do all that I speak, then I will be an enemy unto thine enemies and an adversary unto thine adversaries. For mine angel shall go before thee and bring thee in unto the Amorites and the Hittites and the Perizzites, and the Canaanites, the Hevites, and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. You see it? Do you realize that the spirits of darkness that worked with those very people are the same spirits we're contending with today? Maybe you didn't know it, but they're the same spirits. They don't reproduce. They're the same spirits. These are the same evil spirits. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods. We don't give in. We don't give up. Don't bow down to their gods. Nor serve them. Nor do after their works. Do not act like them. For thou shalt utterly overthrow them. And quite break down their images. Destroy their altars. Mashakaraba city. And he shall serve the Lord your God. And he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. Hallelujah. There shall nothing cast their young nor be barren in thy land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear. Look at this. I will send my fear before thee. And will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. They shall flee before thee. And I will send hornets before thee. Which shall drive out the Hevites, the Canaanites, and the Hittites from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year. Lest the land become desolate and the beasts of the field multiply against thee. But little and little I will drive them out from before thee. Until thou be increased and inherit the land. Blessed be God. So So we are on our way you can see. We are occupying more and more. We are increasing in glory by the day. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So we are winning. Satan has no chance. He told us, he says, thou shalt not bow down to their gods. Don't do it, nor serve them, nor do after their works. Don't follow their strategies. Don't act like them. And refuse to submit to them. Don't bow down to their gods. So when we hear of these evil, wicked things that they're doing, we are stared within our spirits against their wickedness. And we have no fear of them. And we use the name of Jesus Christ and cut them off. Hallelujah. Blessed be God. All right. So I said, I'm going to read to you 
a scripture now because you want to know what's the message of the month. Hebrews chapter 13 in verse 15. By him, therefore, by Jesus Christ, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually, that is the fruit of our lips, giving thanks to his name. He says, by him, by Jesus Christ, let us offer the sacrifice of praise to God. Offer the sacrifice of praise to God. You know, a sacrifice is a gift or offering that you bring to a deity. And usually it's something of value to you. Of value to you. In those days, those animals were of much value. And they offered them in sacrifice because God asked exactly for that. So they brought their sacrifices. Then he says, in the New Testament, it will not be sacrifices of bulls and goats. Not of animals. Because the ultimate sacrifice would have been offered. And that's Jesus Christ. And so he says, now we offer in the place of those bulls and goats, praise to God. Offer the sacrifice of praise to God continually. And then he explains what that means. He says, that is the fruit of our lips, which are words. Giving thanks. Now, what's translated giving thanks there is the Greek homologio. Homologio means to make confessions. It means that you are making proclamations of praise and adoration to his name. You're making confessions to his name. Confessions, words of praise and thanksgiving. It's different from another term, Eucharistia, which also means giving thanks. That's what you had in 1 Timothy chapter 2, verse 1. Can you go there? Good. It says, I accept there for the first of all supplications, prayers, intercessions, and giving of thanks. This is Eucharistia. It's different from homologio. Eucharistia is a prayer of thanksgiving. You're actually making thanks. You're saying, thank you, Lord. You see, you're thanking him for A, B, or C. But in homologio, you're doing more than thanking. You're making proclamations of his glory, of his ability, of his wonders. You're declaring who he is. And all of this is wrapped up in his name. You're using his name in such a glorious way in those amazing proclamations of faith. Hallelujah. So they are faith's professions. You see, that's what you do. So, do you realize how powerful that is? So the Spirit said that this month of November is the month of praise. It's the month of praise. Hallelujah. It's a month of praise. So we're going to have his praises in our lips and in our hearts. We're going to sing his praise. We're going to proclaim his praise. Endlessly. He deserves all the praise. And you realize that one of the ways of praising him is declaring his excellencies. And you also understand that praise is one of the most 
amazing weapons of war. In the spirit is one of the most devastating weapons of war. It's one of those weapons that completely without announcement shatters the fortresses of Satan. Completely. In other words, they're inside and without something happening step by step, the whole thing collapses. Push! At once, it's all gone. It was there a moment ago and suddenly it's gone. When praise comes in. So why would we be making those proclamations and declarations and when we now come with praise? What they were thinking, like, uh, oh, well, well, maybe there was an, a tremor. Oh, did the place really shake? Oh, all those people, they've been talking, and, and they don't understand what's going on. It's like, you know, you use a matchet, it doesn't go. So you come with some heavier metals, it doesn't go. You come with what bulldozer, and you bring it down. All right? Okay, this is more than bulldozer. So now, in terms of weaponry, you're looking at something that's far more devastating than the, atom than the atomic bomb. This is far more devastating than every kind of weapon that man has ever conceived. This is the kind that shatters in a way that human beings have difficulty remembering whether there was ever a thing there. This shatters both man, beast, and spirits. And we are about to use this. We're about to use the most devastating of all in our arsenal. No wonder God said, it is the mound of praise. La brosecata romantica. Lord, thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Oh, hallelujah. Our Lord is gracious. Can you just worship him right there? Worship him. Worship him. It's our month of praise. It's our month of praise. We might as well just begin. Eben, can you come do some praise here? Come lead us. Hallelujah. It's our month of praise. So we're bringing into the warfare the most devastating weapon of all. Mm. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, shut up. Oh, you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our praise. Take all the praise. Take all the praise. Praise the Lord. Take all the praise. I am prayerful that you have been blessed by this message. And uh, I just want to take this time. If you have not invited Christ into your life, in the house of God, especially if you're watching online, if, if you haven't invited Jesus Christ to be the Lord of your life, I want you just to repeat this prayer after me. Say, oh Lord God, I believe with all my heart in Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, I believe he died for me and God raised him from the dead. I believe he is alive today. I confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord of my life. From this day, through him and in his name, I have eternal life. 
I am born again. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. I am now a child of God. If you're in the house and you have prayed that prayer and really meant it in your heart that today is the day that you're giving your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, go ahead and raise your hand. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Mama. God bless you. We'll have one of the ushers minister to you. But if you're online watching and today is the day that you have decided to give your life to our Lord Jesus Christ, I want to congratulate you. If you are in the area, we would love to invite you to, to join us in service. We're here in Ever Beach, Message of Peace Ministry, service at 10 a.m. If you're one on online and you're attending our service next week, Please let our ushers know because we want to help you through this new journey in your life. We want you to get connected with a Bible church. We are a Bible church and we want to help you with this journey. So praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. How many of us enjoy the message, especially for today's word? The word is praise. It was so in line with our daily devotion. You know, giving thanks to God, confessing his word. It's about, uh, you know, being a very uh you no know, doing the work that god has given for you and i you know our word this morning is talking about courageous this is what we proclaim this is what we confess when we have the word of god in us jesus christ has given us that courage to do great things you know when pastor read about the book of Colossians 4 12 it says uh Ephesus, who is one of you a servant of christ salute you always laboring fervently this is who we are laboring firmly because of the courage that we have received from our lord jesus christ which is the word of god that is able to build you up say i'm courageous and i'm living for god so like i said this is our month of praise so every word that comes out of your 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 body your soul every breath that comes out let it be a breath of praise to our god praise the lord so in other words, every time you breathe out, you're breathing the name of God because you're confessing God over your life. So with that said, this is our first Sunday of the month, which is our communion Sunday. Can I have my, uh, please, usher? From the book of 1 Corinthians, Paul writes, For I receive from the Lord what is also passed on to you. So this is what Paul wrote. The Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. This was a symbolic of his body which was broken for you and I, for our sake. So when we take the communion or taking the communion, it marks our oneness with him, our Lord Jesus Christ. This is why we commune with him. He was crucified in our place. Now when we break bread, we're actually celebrating the great works that he did for you and I on the cross. Praise the Lord. And in the same way, after his supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me. His blood was shed so that sin wouldn't have any power and control over you and I. Your new life is a result of this new covenant. You are what he got for his sacrifice. Say thank you, Jesus. So when we take the communion, remember the things and declare them in prayer. Thanking God for all that Jesus has achieved for you and I. So before we receive it, let me just pray over the bread and the cup. 
Dear Father, thank you for the body of Jesus that was broken for me and the whole world. His blood that was shed for the remission of my sins. Now I know my body won't be broken and sin will never have dominion over me. The punishment for my sins was laid upon Jesus and by his stripes we are all healed. Thank you, Father, for the divine life and health that we have in Christ. In Jesus' name, and we all say it, amen. amen. So go ahead and uh, take the bread. But before you break it, I mean, before you receive it, just go ahead and break it and then receive it in Jesus' name. cup of the new covenant go ahead and receive it in Jesus name father we just thank you so much for the precious blood of Jesus his body that was broken so that we will not be broken the crucifixion of our Lord Jesus Christ on the cross and the blood that has washed away the multitude of our sins. The unleavened bread, which represents the death of our Lord. He was in the grave for three days, and on the third day, he resurrected. Father, we thank you so much that you love the world so much that you've given your best to us. We receive you with all of us. We are humbled. We are honored. We love you, Abba. We love you, Adonai. We love you, Yeshua. Barak HaKodesh. We pray this in Yeshua's name and the saints of God say. Amen. 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 Well, greetings in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. So glad to see all your beautiful faces, including those of you who are being live streaming into us. It's wonderful to see you all. This time, I would like to go over a couple of our announcements. We have our food distribution that's going to be on November 21, 2020. Please pass the word on to your families and friends. We will be located right here at the Boys and Girls Club at Eva Beach. Right behind there is a parking lot and there's a whole lot of food that will be distributed. Um, please come, partake of it. It's a blessing for you and it's a blessing to your neighbors and your friends. Last month, in the month of October, we did a phenomenal job with the help of the Holy Spirit. We've had such great volunteers. We had five huge trucks that came last month, and it was a huge blessing to the city of Ever Beach. We could not have done that without the work of the Holy Spirit. Um, our Father, Yeshua, Hamashiach, Adonai, and of course, the many multitudes of volunteers that came out to help us. So again, we're having that every month. Again, November 21 at 8 o'clock in the morning. That's when our lines will open up. So please come on down and partake. The next part of our announcement is uh, today at 2 o'clock at Santa Island, right at um, Santa Island Access Road. We do have Hebrews. Um, it's a baptism for your Hebrew name. So we will be meeting with Rabbi in, at Sand Island today at 2 o'clock. If that is you and you want a Hebrew name, um, we do have sign in. We will have papers in the back and you will need to come in and, you know, sign up with us so that we'll take this paper with us to Rabbi. And as he baptizes you, and it's so beautiful, as Rabbi baptizes you into the water as you come out, you know, it's a time that he is like really reflecting on your own name, your name that you were born with. But notice that your name tends to change as with Abraham. Abraham's name changed from Abram to Abraham the Lord changed his name and he had to pretty much live up to that name so those of you who've been studying Torah with us on Tuesdays which are our cell group you know you understand what we're speaking about so again if you're interested in getting your Hebrew name there will be a water baptism you know today at two o'clock and name will be signed in and rabbi will give you your Hebrew name uh, maybe a week or two weeks um, from today so please sign up after church service we will have that set up for you in the back or right outside on the table um, sign up for your children if you want that pray about it 
And for those of you in Torah studies, I know you're excited just as I am just excited for this. Also today, I would like to welcome any visitors. We thank you so much. Visitors, thank you. Thank you so much. We honor your presence. Thank you so much for gracing us with your presence. It is such an honor, you know, to embrace you all here in the spirit and do a, you know, a high five there. Thank you so much. You know, congratulations. We're so honored to have you with us. We pray that you enjoy your time here in service. We pray that you enjoy the word. It's about the word. It's a word. It's a word. That's who we are. We're Rock Hagodesh, the work of the Holy Spirit. When he ministers, he imparts that into our spirit. We run when he speaks. We run with what he puts into our spirit. And today, our man of God, you know, Pastor Chris Oyakilome, all the way from Nigeria. He is awesome. We're also one of grateful and so thankful to, you know, our very own man of God also, Rabbi um, Daniel Vargas. Uh, you know, we, Pastor Dad and I are ordained under Rabbi Vargas. But, uh, you know, we connect with churches that brings in the word and sticks to the word without changing so much of anything about the word of God has to say. Amen. All right, at this time, it's our time for our tithes and offering. Um, if you need an envelope here, go ahead and just raise your hand and we'll have our ushers come on down and their hand deliver an envelope to you. If you are watching us live stream, we do have three platforms that you can make your donation. We have the Venmo app. We also have, you know, an online giving. You can jump onto our website and we have, you know, um, our text. You can text your donation and we will receive it. So any amount, we greatly appreciate it. Um, just grateful because it allow us to be not only a blessing to you all, but, you know, a huge blessing to our community as well as to the state of Hawaii and globally. That's the idea right there is to help out the multitude. Now for the book of Philippians 4, verse 67, and I want to help you, you know, with that, just to kind of remember, you know, it says, be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So this is basically saying that, you know, don't be anxious for anything. Be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. So what is supplication? Supplication is the, is the action of asking or you know begging for something with your father but because you are a christian right when you receive jesus as your lord and savior you no longer beg you know we don't beg our father for things because you're a child of god now we go to him in the name of yeshua and like a little child like a child who goes to daddy say daddy i need this this is what i need he knows what you need before you even ask for but you go before him with a heart of thanksgiving and to say thank you papa god for all that you've done this is just something that i'm presenting to you but let your will be done on earth as it is done in heaven right so that's what it is prayers and supplication and after you put your need after you ask god for what it is that you need the next verse says you know also with thanksgiving so our prayers don't stop at just asking God for something. We thank Him. We thank God after put our requests or our petition before the Lord. And after you put your petition and your requests, and then we thank Papa God. That's the next verse right there. With thanksgiving, let your requests be made and known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. There you go. You go to God in prayer, in supplication, and in thanksgiving. Those are the three things that you do when you go before Papa God. You don't just go before him. You got to use the name of Yeshua HaMashiach. You got to use the name of Jesus Christ. So Lord, I come before you in the name of Jesus and then you give him your request, give God your, you know, your petition. And then you thank Papa God that he has heard your request. He has heard your petition. And then you exit by faith out of his throne room. So simple. Those are little simple things that we want to help you. You know, it's about the word. You want to use the word, but how do we apply the word? I've just taught you right now how to apply your word as you enter into the presence of our Father. Amen. All right, let's go ahead and pray for your, um, your tithes and offering. 
as well as for those of you who are mainstreaming in. Let's go ahead and pray. Father, we just thank you so much for your grace, your love, and your mercy. We thank you, Father, for your word. Here in Philippians 4, verse 6, 7, your word says to be anxious for nothing, but in everything by prayer, supplication, and thanksgiving. We come before you, Father, to thank you for your children. Thank you for their tithes and offering. Thank you that you will remember them, Father. Bless their food, bless their water, bless their home, bless their health. Bless your children. Bless everything that concerns them. Rebuking the work of the enemy, Father God, that come in to steal, kill, and to destroy families. Father, we thank you so much that you have heard our prayers. Your word says to bring your tithes and offering into the storehouse. And see, you should test me. And it shall be pressed down, shaken together, run it over. See if I shall not open up the floodgates of heaven, and I shall pour my blessings upon you. Father, thank you for pouring your blessings upon your children this very morning. Father, thank Thank you so much that you remember all that they've done father and thank you that with the work of the holy spirit that is with them you are perfecting them in every way for perfection comes in different stages but we cast on to you every cares every anxious you know thoughts that we may have any stress because your word talks about it anyone that serves you how to come to you by faith not by fear not by anxiety because anyone that has fear has a relationship with the devil anyone that stresses out has a relationship with the devil anyone that is worried or fearful they have a relationship with the devil they cannot serve you God when they have those things in them for they come before you father let them come before you with a spirit father God of excellency a spirit that will praise and worship you in all things and a spirit that fear not for your word says fear not Thank you, Father, for you are in control of all things. Do not let their eyes, you know, be weary in the sense that they see things not working out. Let them trust in your word. For your word has preeminence in us and allow your word to flourish in their spirit, in their soul, and out of their mouth, giving you a praise of thanksgiving. We honor you, Father, in the name of Yeshua and the saints of God say, Amen. Amen, amen. Turn to someone and say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed. I'm blessed, I'm blessed, I'm blessed, oh, I'm blessed. So blessed, so blessed, so blessed, oh, I'm blessed. shall come to my rising for I am favored and grace in all I do I shall prosper everything I touch shall be
Please rise as we conclude. our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit is with us all now and forevermore in Jesus name amen amen God bless you